Well, Tanya Marie August Hansen, MLC, is with us to talk about how it's been going for her. Welcome, journalist to journalist as such. I must ask you that. Was it quite a change to get to the other side, as they say? Um, actually, um, less so than you you might expect. I think because. Um, when you're sort of like passionate about that sort of job, I mean, it, it turns into more of um, a, a vocation than anything else. Journalism really doesn't it? Mm. Like you're passionate about it. It's like the, there are a number of things that don't really matter, like pay and stuff like that. Like you're really, really determined to just make sure that you do a good job with whatever crops up, whatever you do. Um, so it, it's um, a lot of the work that I was doing as a journalist, I mean, I'm, I'm quite sort of um, more investigative. I like looking into the finer detail of things. So um, it's been a learning curve going into, um, into, into Parliament and, and learning how things are done in that way. But it, it's kind of it's still sort of like a natural thing for me to kind of mm. want to dig into detail, learn more about things. And, and, and did you I mean, did this come out <laughs> from nowhere or was something you thought about to go into politics or did this, the, the opportunity oh. arose? <laughs> I don't think um, I don't think I didn't spend a great deal of time. I mean, I've always been interested in politics. Mm -hmm. um, well, you've been covering it, of course. I've been covering it, but before that, um, at university, I just remember like sort of sitting. I'd always have BBC Parliament on in the background, um, and I or I'd listen to BBC and um, Radio Four, and I'd, I'd have it on in the background while I was doing my work, my coursework, and stuff like that. And it it, um, it was always like a comfort to kind of like have something else going on in the background. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I've always had an interest in it. And uh, yeah, so it's it, but it wasn't something that I was planning on going into because I'm still now like, and I think that you could probably say the same, and, and all of the journalists that might be in the Max Radio newsroom or in BBC on Van and everywhere else, like they on the islands, like you, the job, it, you're passionate about it, you love it, like um, you love digging into detail, and you love um, sort of getting that story out, and that feeling, that buzz that you get, it'll never leave you. Right now, government though is like walking in with Everyone always says that. You, I mean, <laughs> you must have been sort of brought down to the scale of speed and things compared with just getting on with it. Obviously, you know, uh, I think that you kind of um, you become more realistic about how things can be done because at the end of the day, every single person that's working in government, um, you know, whether it civil service or um, politically. Um, they are all people. They're all human beings. You know, they all have jobs. They all have mortgages. They all have kids. They've all got things going on, and each one of them have you know got this um, their own specific like workload and um, their own priorities. And um, you kind of you you become a lot more realistic about what you can actually achieve and how you can actually achieve things. Um, but I, I don't. It's not really dampened my spirits with it. It's okay. it's not. Um, you know, I've not been sort of crushed by it. How do you view it though? Is, is it just that looking through, checking and, and, and working on that or do you feel you've got your own things you want to bring to the party? Um, I think the most important thing for me is, is definitely the parliamentary side. Um, more so um, than anything else that I do, the parliamentary work that I do, the research that I do, like for example with the Poverty Committee, um, the research that I'm doing um, being able to kind of understand things and finding like processes that, that may not necessarily be working because sometimes like you'll you'll find out about certain um, sort of parts of government work and you'll look into it and on the surface it's like oh well you know it's, it's quite a simple sort of oh well you could just fix it like this or that or it's just going wrong because of x y and z and actually you need to kind of step back and see like the, the process itself and 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 what's wrong with it and and what research might be done to in order to kind of like dig deep into it and kind of figure out what the the right solution is as opposed to what the obvious solution is right. so it's it's um yeah the parliamentary side of things the the scrutiny work i mean people throw around that word scrutiny and it, it was thrown around an awful lot over the course of the election process um, but when you actually get in you figure out what it is and you're like oh my gosh okay there's a hell of a lot to it so a lot of reading <laughs> oh yeah um you have to go through everything deal. yes yes if you're doing the job right you're going through everything um, if you're doing the job right, you are reading, you are scrutinising, you are understanding better, you're wanting to learn more about the law, you're wanting to learn more about legislative process. Um, and I do, desperately. Um, I've got an absolute mm -hmm. thirst for, um, for, for learning more and more about it. And some of the drafters perhaps have had like a million and one questions. There's one in particular who's been extraordinary with trying to teach me how... Um, 
you know, um, wording is, is put together and, and to, to sort of understand um, a sen sentence structure in terms of, um, um, you know, right. legislative writing and drafting um, so that I know what I'm working with. Now, obviously, you, you've got invited into government onto certain things. What, yes. what did you get? Remind us what, what, what are you on? Um, home affairs. Um, right. I'm responsible for legislation in home affairs. Um, I wasn't planning on taking a departmental uh, membership really? at all. No. Um, okay, why? But, and uh, <laughs> and uh, basically, I ended up having a conversation with um, Minister Bill Malarkey in Home Affairs, and he turned around to me and he said, well, okay, well, what you want to work with is, is parliamentary stuff, um, but we've got a lot of legislation that's going through Home Affairs at the moment, and um, there's a great deal of legislation going through Home Affairs yeah. at the moment. I mean, we've got um, the, the sex offences um, bill that's currently out to, to public consultation right now, and that deals with um, a, a, num a myriad of, of issues, including rape, including sexual um, exploitation, child sex exploitation. And, you know, it, the, there were really, really serious issues that you're getting to grips with there. Um, and going through that bill, it's almost like, um, and, and we have do, done numerous times, I mean, Dr. Allenson has been working on it um, from its, its sort of, um, its birth, as it were. Um, so the, the two of us have been working together and I've learned an awful lot from him on, you know, how to read the bill and how um, to make sure that it makes sense. So, for example, you might have um, um, sort of a number of different references to different pieces of legislation elsewhere. Um, and then you need to kind of like read those pieces of legislation and understand what the link is. And then is that legislation um, written correctly? Because perhaps it was written in 1970-something. Okay. But you didn't you know want to I mean? go into government, but this <laughs> tipped you yeah. into it. I mean, because there's it obviously a financial <laughs> thing as well. I mean, come on, everyone knows that you know, if you go on into it's, government, you get the money raised up, don't you? It's, I think it's an, it's an attitude. Sometimes for, I think, people, um, certain individuals, it, it might be a factor. Um, for me, if I don't agree with something in the department and I can't agree with something in the department, you, almost, you need to keep your moral compass about you. Um, and if I can't agree to something, I won't stay. Right. Um, categorically won't stay. And but you're happy then, that, right? that additional amount of money, yeah. my morals are more important to me than the money. Right. Let's <laughs> talk about the whole structure, because I've talked to everyone about this, about the whole business about pay compared with ML MHKs and that sort of thing. Your views on this? Because everyone asked that question at the hustings and <sighs> everyone's had a pay rise, haven't they? So what's going on? Uh, well, that's I, I need to be careful with this one because I'm on the Emoluments Committee and we were yeah. actually um, looking into potential um, to potentially not Hmm. Um, the, the the sort of avenues that we might take to not take it because it's it is linked to the pay spine um, mm -hmm. the the civil service pay spine the um, you know MHKs and MLCs. Do you think it should be a so separation or do you think you're fine? And the expenses, I mean, that's another one we everyone will bring up all the time, I'm sure. Oh, uh, the expenses, definitely. So, I mean, I had a view as well before I actually came into um, into into politics. Um, that you know expenses shouldn't be laid out for um, MLCs, for example. Um, <laughs> you change your mind? To an extent, oh. um, yes. But that the reason behind that is that um, there's a common understanding or, or conception that um, MHKs, you know, they've got um, the constituency work. Um, yes, they do, and it is a massive and pivotal part of their role as an MLC. You don't just stop working at a certain point in the day and say, right, OK, well, I've not got constituency work, so I'm just going to go back home. You continue on with that scrutiny work throughout the rest of the day. Um, so um, there is a level of if you don't have expenses to learn on the job, then you you don't get that sort of career development work on the go. Right. Are you saying you you now think you should to keep an extent, this to an extent I've got I think it's a very archaic um, way of, of dealing with it the expenses themselves I mean I don't understand personally on a very personal level it should be taxed and <laughs> it should be and you, taxed you don't it have should to be say what it's for or anything it's just given to you I mean everyone gets yeah, that yeah right. and I, I fundamentally disagree with that I think either you know be honest about it it's it's Salary. It's part like, of the pay, isn't it? I mean, yeah, that's what it's part of the pay. It goes into the monthly pay packet. It's How do you part ask, of the answer pay. that question when the old man uh, newspapers they ask everyone, didn't they? What did, what did you they say? Did. I can't remember. I was so happy that he asked that question. I'm really? going to be perfectly honest. Really? Yes. Why would you say? Because that's a bit of investigative journalism, mm. right there. You know, it was um, it was brazen. It was an email that went out to every single MHK, every single single MLC, and it was um, you know Sam Turnton, wasn't it? And yeah. um, it was you know just a. Um, can you tell me what you spend that on, please? 
absolutely and you had to think about fantastic. It. <laughs> I was right. so pleased. <laughs> Um, and the, all of the responses that were coming in off the back of it and the, the actual piece that was pulled together, he did a fantastic job on that. And it was, um, it was an eye opener because um, if you actually read through it, you sort of realize that this money isn't actually, you know, nobody, for example, um, spending it on clothes. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. That, that's me, that's me. That. <laughs> um, but before we finish but, though, we could talk a long time, but um, enjoying it, Want to continue? I mean, it's early days, I know, but you know, how how you feel? Um, I absolutely well, love pause. the job. All right. Um, <laughs> no, it, very it's, long pause. it's a passionate pause. Um, <laughs> okay. I absolutely love the job, and I would, if if I could stay awake all day, every day, doing it, I would be. Um, I feel very passionate about it. Um, but so you'd like to repeat and carry on? You know, I love it. I absolutely love it. And if, yeah, well, if they want me, they might, they might not. Who knows? It's been, it's been, you've, got, you've got a while, you've got a while. Yeah, yeah, okay. I've got another four years left yet. But um, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's humbling. Um, it's very, very humbling. It's um, being able to actually make a difference like that. It's, it gets into your blood. It, it really does. And it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a passion. 